In the last part of this texturing tutorial, we'll discuss tools that are available for adjusting the size and location of textures on surfaces. Until now, we've just talked about placing textures on, on surfaces, but once you've placed a texture on a surface, you'll often need to adjust its position. And RenderWorks provides a number of different tools for adjusting the location of the texture on the surface of an object and also for changing the apparent size of the texture as well beyond the size that you specified when the texture was originally created. Now let's take a look at a sample project. This is a uh, similar building to one we saw earlier but it has different textures applied and also it's a multi-story building with the different stories placed on separate layers. And the first tool we can use to adjust the textures placement on the surface of an object is the object info palette. So let's zoom in and then I'll select one well here. And now take a look at the object info palette. Click on the render tab to access the rendering controls and scroll down to the bottom half of the palette which contains a variety of texture mapping controls. Texture mapping actually refers to the process of placing textures on surfaces and then adjusting their size and location. And in this tutorial, we're looking at a few very specific items in the object info palette. By the way, when you're adjusting textures on walls before making any changes in the object info palette, make sure that, that you've selected the correct wall surface in the part drop down box. Otherwise, you may not see any changes taking place when you make them because because the changes may be may be taking place on a surface that is not visible. So in this case the texture is applied to the right side of the wall so I'm making sure the that the part drop down box has the right side selected. So back to the bottom of the object info palette. First note the two offset data fields. So entering horizontal and vertical dimensions here will move the texture in those directions on the surface of the object. So in the offset V data field, V is for vertical, I'll enter 300 millimeters and then hit tab. And the change is visible right away since the scene is rendered in OpenGL. And OpenGL renders quickly. Now sometimes if the image is broken up a little bit after rendering, particularly in OpenGL, just, just force a redraw by double clicking on the pan tool in the basic palette. Now there are other controls here that can change the position of the texture directly. For example, we can change the rotation value either by entering a value in degrees or moving the slider interactively like this. And we can also change the size of the texture on the object by changing the scale value above. You can do this again either by entering a multiplication factor or moving the slider interactively. Moving the slider all the way to the right will double the scale of the texture, but you can always enter a larger or a smaller number manually in the data field and then press the tab key to see the result. The last item is the Use World Z for Origin checkbox near the very bottom of the palette. This item helps you to align textures that are assigned to objects on different layers. And when the walls or objects on each of those layers have this item selected, the textures will usually align vertically in a seamless fashion. So let's, let's try it here. First, I'll increase the scale of the second floor texture to match the one on the lower floor. And now I'll select the Use World Z for Origin checkbox for each of these walls and you can see right away that they have adjusted in position. Now how well they align depends on a number of things including the nature of the texture itself but when you have a problem making sure that objects on different layers have their textures aligning vertically try selecting the Use World Z for Origin checkbox as a, as a first measure. Another tool for aligning and selecting textures is the Attribute Mapping tool and this tool is located in the basic palette right here. But first I'll switch to a front view in order to see this more clearly and then render in OpenGL. Now the attribute mapping tool lets you manipulate a texture on an object surface directly. Select it in the basic palette 
and then click on the wall or surface on which the texture is located to select it. You may need, by the way, to select the original repeat mode up here on the left in order to see the entire repeating texture. Otherwise, it may only show one instance of the tile, and if it's off to one side, you won't see it. So, so generally, for for moving the texture on the surface like this, when you're lining things up, it may it may be better to select the original repeat mode up here on the left. Okay, now now move the cursor over the surface, and you'll see a set of blue markers or control handles. And move the cursor over the center marker until the cursor changes into a cross like this and then you can click and drag the texture into position you can move the texture and you can snap to corners or other elements and you can even rotate the texture on the surface if you if you want to all of these tools have many more capabilities than I've shown here and it's definitely worth experimenting with them to see what they offer but what we see in this tutorial are the basic aspects of these tools and much more is available once you become familiar with them and this is material that is documented in the help and other sources. But the main point is that after you have applied a texture to a surface you can adjust its location and its size by using the object info palettes controls or the attribute mapping tool directly.